Ruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much uh, for attending. Welcome to our home. Um, on this week, my thoughts. I would like to examine the concept of expectations. You know, somehow, we live our lives many times lamenting about the past and dreading the future. Some of us see the glass as half empty rather than half full. I try to live my life with this very simple rule. Expect nothing and appreciate everything. You know, it's an easy statement to make, but more often than not, it's a difficult statement to follow. I think that most people would agree that this is, though, good advice. And more often than not, we prepare ourselves for negativity in our lives. Misery becomes much like an unwanted guest that you're kind of stuck with. Or are you? When someone looks at us in a certain way or somehow doesn't acknowledge our presence, we conjure up all types of scenarios in our minds. Why are they angry at me? Uh, what did I do wrong? When we read a text or an email, we scrutinize every word. Or when we receive an answer, we don't receive an answer to a question immediately, we wonder, is there a problem that we didn't realize existed? And we search deep within the recesses of our minds. What do we expect from our friends, family, and co-workers? Do their actions reach our expectations? If we thought that they would be willing to help us, and then they don't, regardless of the reason, we may see it as a negative. When in reality, many times, they really would have been happy to help us. But at the time, they are legitimately unable to do so. We many times take that whole thing personally that our expectations were not met. They did nothing, and that is the problem. We felt that they should have done something. The expectations that we have in our relationship with our children and our spouses, how many times did they actually mirror our thoughts or our desires? More often than not, we expect them to be more attuned to our likes and dislikes. We feel that they should have known better. We often prepare ourselves for the worst. And even if it doesn't materialize, then in our minds, we have lived out every possible negative scenario. Whatever the reality turns out to be, we have made ourselves go through hell many times for nothing. We chase the demons that reside in the depths of our minds. Even when things that occur are good. However, many times the reality of the situation does not live up to our expectations, then even though the results may have been positive, but we have expected much more. We felt that the end result should have been even better than they were. So rather than enjoying whatever blessings we have received, no, we lament over the fact that we didn't receive all the good that we had thought that we could have or should have received. Strange. But it is many times the things that we don't receive that actually make us appreciate those things that we do receive. If we look into the Torah, we can witness a pristine example of how a person should conduct themselves with others. In the portion of Ayera, Avram Avino, Abraham our father, takes in three travelers on the road. He offers them hospitality. He tells them that he would be happy to provide them with ma'at mayim, a little bit of water, and pas lechem, and a morsel of bread. And then they could continue on their way. In reality, what does he serve them? The Torah tells us that he prepared a calf's tongue for each of one of his guests. And while they were waiting for their calf tongues to be cooked, he served each of them cheese and milk. We read the opposite with Bullock. He said to Bilam, Why did you not come right away? Do you think that I couldn't honor you? But when we read in verse 39 where it states, Bullock sacrificed only one ox and one sheep, and he sent some to Bilam and dignitaries that were with him. His initial statement huh, made it seem like he would honor Bilam with a feast. But then, he only served one ox and one sheep to satisfy the appetites of Bilam and his whole entourage. As we read in Pirkei Avos, the Ethics of the Fathers, where Shammai states, and more ma'at, Say harba. Great advice. Say a little and do a lot. Avravino exceeded the expectations of his guests. He promised them only a little, 
but then he prepared a feast for them. It was he who orchestrated a scenario where both he and his guests were pleased. With Bullock's hospitality, well, we witnessed the exact opposite. We also witnessed in the story of Bilaam, the prophet of the nations, mentioned in the portion of Bullock. The Torah there describes his great expectations. He was looking forward to receiving great wealth and honor. Again, that would be in addition to the pleasure he would enjoy by cursing the Jewish nation that he so hated. In the end, well, he left Midian in debt. So we witnessed that both his greed and his high expectations cost him his life. We read into the story of Korach and his followers. They all expected more honor for themselves. Whatever honor it was that they already enjoyed, their expectations were even greater. Korach expected more, and in the end, he lost everything. In contrast to Aaron, who expected nothing, hmm, and he received everything. He was a pristine example of expect nothing and appreciate everything. As it states in Pirkei Avos, the Ethics of the Fathers, Benzoma stated, A Zehu Asher, who is someone who is a rich person? Hasameach Bechelka, one who is happy with his lot. I always recommend to my students that they should try to study in Hebrew. There are many times when the English translation just doesn't quite express the message properly. This Mishnah can be used as one of those examples. The Hebrew word for happy, sameach, used in this Mishnah is present tense. This fact becomes very important. In order to be able to understand the true and deeper meaning in a word, Benzoma is teaching us the important lesson in life, that even more important than an individual being content with their life, they must be happy. Accepting misery as an inevitability is not an option. One must do as they say, so to speak, put on a happy face. We can only achieve the happiness by living in the moment, expecting nothing, and only then are we in a position to appreciate everything. Imagine, imagine if someone were to give you a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I think you would be pretty happy. What about before you received the money? Were you happy then? Well, maybe not. And what about after you received the hundred thousand? Well, you might think that you really could have gotten two hundred thousand. So when are you truly happy? Only in the moment, in the present tense. That's why they call it a present. We learn a lesson from our forefather, Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our father, in the portion of Bayetze. When he was on his way to Lovin's house, he prayed on the Temple Mount, and then he spent the night there. And in the morning, when he awoke, God spoke to him. Expect nothing. Yaakov Avinu asked God for only, Lechem Lechol, for only enough bread to eat, who beg at Lilboch, and only the minimum amount of clothing to wear. Though that was all that Yaakov requested of God, we read later in the portion. And the man became tremendously wealthy. Appreciate everything. Though his request was modest, he displayed a pristine work ethic. He exerted a great, time, great deal of time and effort to attain his success. It wasn't an accident. From Yaakovina, we learned the important lesson of, again, expect nothing and appreciate everything. It is a guaranteed recipe for happiness. However, for someone to attain success in any arena, they must first put in the effort. This is a lesson that we learn again from Yaakov Levine. We witnessed that even though he worked for his father-in-law, Lovan, who was an unethical person, yet Yaakov never changed his moral character. He retained his integrity. He displayed a pristine work ethic, even in his association with a cheat, like Lovin. As Yaakov stated in the end of the portion of Ayetse, Yaakov had left Lovin's house with his family and all of his household. Lovin pursued Yaakov and accused him of stealing his possessions. Yaakov said to Lovin, Twenty years I worked for you. By day I was consumed by the scorching heat, and at night, by the frost, sleep was constantly snatched from my eyes. You changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father's had not been with me, you would have sent me away empty-handed. 
Even under these trying circumstances, Yaakov did not allow his relationship with an unscrupulous person like Laban to influence his character. If we examine the holiday of Hanukkah, we can once again witness this concept of expect nothing and appreciate everything. The Jewish nation had been victorious in battle against the mighty Greek army. The Greeks had defiled the holy temple with their idols. The Hashminoyim returned to the holy temple and they sanctified it. They wanted to light the menorah, and all of, but all of the oil that they found had been defiled by the Greeks, other than one cruise of oil. It was their desire to light the menorah in a state of spiritual purity, with pure oil, and not, that had not been defiled. However, they were all in a state of spiritual defilement from contact with the dead. It took them seven days to purify themselves, and then, on the eighth day, they were then able to produce pure oil. The one undefiled cruise of oil that they found contained only enough oil to, to light the menorah for one night. So they decided to divide the one cruise of oil into eight equal parts. Then they would light the menorah each night with one of those eight parts of oil. They expected that the oil would burn last only for a short period of time. God Almighty blessed their efforts and the flames lasted until the morning for all of the eight nights of Hanukkah. It was as if each of the seven lamps of the menorah were filled to capacity. This is the reason that we celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah, the festival of lights, for eight days. We commemorate this miracle each year by lighting our menorahs, our way of showing the world our appreciation for everything. We all realize that life can be difficult, sometimes even overpowering. That being the case, we all need to devise a strategy. Life is a game, and we are the players. We have to play the game until the end. We do not have the luxury to walk off the field. It makes no difference what the score is now, whether we are winning or whether we are losing. As long as we stay in the game, we always have the possibility of winning. Then why not win? I think a good recipe for success is to regroup and start the next inning, the next hole, the next round, the next challenge with the mantra, expect nothing and appreciate everything. There is nothing in life that guarantees success, but there are some things that make it more probable. And with that, let us hope to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sukkainu quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. I just want to mention that next week, Wednesday night, will be the beginning of Tisha B'Av. It's a 25-hour fast. It starts Wednesday night and goes to thir through Thursday. Again, as the, t the time when both of the temples were destroyed, also many other events in, J in history, world history, occurred, such as the Jews being exiled from Spain in 1492. It was on Tisha B'Av. So there, again, it's something that we, in fact, Napoleon was going by a synagogue on Tisha B'Av, and he heard people crying from, his, from the synagogue. And he said, he sent one of his captains to find out what they were doing. And the captain came back and said that they were mourning the loss of their temple. And Napoleon said, when was their temple destroyed? And the captain said, some 1,500 years ago. Napoleon nodded and said, this is a nation destined for greatness. Again, something to remember and to, to Keep these things in mind to never lose, lose sight of the past, but always look forward to the future. Uh, if you have some time before the holiday, there is a lecture on YouTube and on Spotify uh, called The Three Weeks. I think in it you'll find information about this period and also about Tisha B'Av. I hope you find the time to do so. Uh, and again, enjoy. Thank you very much for attending. Have a uh, Be happy, be safe, be healthy. Have an easy fast and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for attending. God bless.